24th. Yeah. 24th day of the month of April, 1989. It's so hard to keep track of them. They keep changing them every single day. You know, they got a different Grand number. Speaker. I don't know why we can't just settle on, you know, a nice, a nice number that we all like, like 10 or 15 or something like that. We're going to talk about... Religion! Exxon. Oh, the oil spill. Shit. And the fact that some of my colleagues in this industry, I don't know that anybody in this market's picked up on it, probably not. Oh, no, no, no. It's right up his alley. But we're going to talk about the, the reported boycott. But we've got ways to get there before we get there. Okay, trust me. Just, 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 it was an extraordinary weekend by, by virtually anyone's standards. And there was one of those lessons to be learned for those of you in business out there. You never, 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 never know if the guy that you're dealing with has his own talk show, okay? Saturday, I decided to go ahead and buy the bicycle that I mentioned briefly last week. And so I went to a bicycle shop on Dill. I won't mention the bicycle shop's name on the dill. No. It's not necessary to mention it. It's a fine bicycle shop. It's an excellent bicycle shop, as a matter of fact. And I walked in and I selected a bicycle. And it was good. And they said, would you like to take it for a test drive? And I said, I sure would. And I went out and I pedaled up and down the streets of, of Tampa for the first time. I couldn't tell you when. I really can't remember the last time I was on a bicycle, but it's got to go back at least... 10, 12, 15 years. And it wasn't that kind of a bike. This is one of those mountain bikes with big fat tires. The big fat seat. Almost large enough to accommodate someone. Well, that's neither here nor there. And anyway, I'm pedaling up and down the streets. And I mean, I'm getting flashbacks and memories of my, of my youth. Because I used to love to ride my bicycle. And it's, it's a whole different trip. It's, it's, a, it's a new world. Quietly. Coasting up and down. Oh, I came back into the shop and I said, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it, I'll take it. And they said, all right. And they put the bicycle up by the cash register and I paid for it by credit card. And as they were filling out the credit card, I saw out of the corner of my eye a young woman take the bicycle and proceed towards the front of the store and out the door with it. Oh, my God. Well, a lot of people that work there. I'd never been in the bicycle shop before, and I just assumed that she worked there. And this was, I was getting a little congested up around the, up around the cash registers. And it didn't seem to bother any of the people that worked there to see her walking out the door with it. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, before I purchased the bike, it was stolen. Stolen from the store before I could even get it outside of the door. And, of course, they didn't have anything quite like it. Well, that was bad. The problem comes in in the relatively nonchalant attitude. And they send somebody, you know, ten minutes later, they send somebody out to look for it while they continued their business and left me standing there cooling my heels for another 15 or 20 minutes. And finally they said, geez, huh, guess what? <laughs> something that, uh, would you like to see something else? By that time, I figured, you know, help. These people, while they, they have an excellent reputation, and while, you know, that looks to me like they're running one hell of a bicycle shop, apparently just don't care quite enough. Uh, you know, apparently they're just a little bit too fat, just a little bit too comfy with their very strong position in the bicycle world in the uh, yuppie area that I live in. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I sit in no one on that store with a, you know, a pile full of ripped up credit card receipts in my hand. And they, of course, are out at bicycle that was stolen, as well as the bicycle that they could have sold that day had they paid a little bit more attention. And that has literally nothing whatsoever to do with what we're dealing with today. I just hope against hope that there's somebody in that bicycle shop right about now saying, Oh, damn, there was that Lassiter. Oh, damn. Because if it hadn't been that Lassiter, I, you know, and if it was somebody else, some other Lassiter, that might have gotten screwed royally. And in any event, he was insulted deeply. And so, like I said, just another lesson for all of you out there who are in business. You never, never know. Tell. You just never, ever, Not ever know who it is head. that you're dealing That's with, terrible. do you? Then there was Sunday. It was? 
very sentimental guy, you know? Uh, I'm into tradition, I'm into the memories of, of the past. Well, I, even just in telling you about the bicycle, going up and down the streets in Tampa, bringing back all the memories of Knights Park and Collingswood, and you know, all the guys I used to go out and ride my bicycle with for hours and hours and hours and hours on end, and all the adventures. I mean, all of that was brought back to me. Well, Sunday, I was at Jack Russell Stadium in Clearwater to throw out a ball for the Clearwater Phillies. I, I had never been to a minor league baseball game before. Hey, you know, I'm a major league kind of guy, you know what I mean? I had never been to a minor league baseball stadium before. I mean, hey, you know, I'm a big city major league kind of guy, you know what I mean? So there were a number of surprises. I remember when I first pulled up to the stadium yesterday, I looked at Barry and I said, oh my God, it's so small. And not all of the, the preparations had been made. There were still a few details that had to be worked out. And so the first thing I thought is, well, I'll go to the will call window. <laughs> they don't have will call windows in stadiums that small. I think that the... But they knew I was coming. And there were tickets there waiting for me. And I went inside and had a couple of hot dogs, and the price was sure right. And, and I walked up and looked outside on the stadium, and God, it was so intimate. Yeah, you know, it wasn't intimidating. It was intimate. You all could almost reach out and touch the players. And yet the, uh, the dimensions were, were definitely major leagues. As a matter of fact, it was bigger than a lot of major league ballparks. The man's not big today. He's spent money. 400 feet to dead center. And the afternoon progressed, and I, I was there to throw out the first ball. I was a little bit concerned I wouldn't be able to throw the damn thing 60 feet, 6 inches. And as a matter of fact, I couldn't. I cheated and stood, you know, a little bit closer to home plate. I didn't really throw from the, from the rubber. And that went all well. And, and then the afternoon was, was, the rest of the afternoon was free to me. And so I, I went up and I sat in the press box and sat back and had an incredibly enjoyable afternoon. Sitting there watching a bunch of guys. I didn't know their names. It didn't make any difference playing baseball. For some strange reason, I just decided to root for the United Clearwater Phillies over the St. Petersburg Cardinals, even though both are technically all teams, you know. And I just really got off on it. It was a cool breeze. It was shady, and people came by and said hello, and that was neat. And the people there at the park, they were even neater because they brought me the ice-cold milk to go with the tasty cakes that they were giving away. And they don't even sell milk there, to the best of my knowledge. I don't know where they, where they came up with it, but I, I was very impressed. And they gave me the ball that I threw out, and that... God, you know, they might as well give me a million dollars. And suddenly it dawns on me that just a very few minutes before, I stood on the very mound. I stood on the very dirt where Robin Roberts once stood and threw balls at the same home plate where Robbie used to throw them to, where Stan Lepata used to catch them. And I, and I walked across... Just the infield that, that Granny Hamner used to practice on, and Willie Jones, and Ted Kazansky, and Chico Fernandez, and Richie Allen, and, and Bob Bowman used to run across that infield on his way out to the outfield, along with Richie Ashburn. All those years so long ago, this laying is, on the floor on in Monday, Collinswood, New Jersey, day after you called me when Mitch was at your house. towards the end of February, the beginning of March, when it was still early, cold was and gray and damp, and sometimes there could be snow again, on the ground. Man. Turning on that little brown plastic Man. radio. This is today. Hearing a ball game being broadcast on the weekends from some very, very far off exotic place called Clearwater, Florida. And my 35 years ago, Clearwater, Florida must have, might as well have been on Mars. Every spring there, there were those radio broadcasts and, 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 and the newspaper and the daily news and the Philadelphia Inquirer and the Camden Courier Post. There would be more and more articles written by, by newspaper men with date lines from strange places like Daytona Beach and Clearwater and St. Petersburg and Fort Myers. So there I was yesterday after watching these guys Class A ball. I've never seen Class A ball before in my life. I understand why it's Class A ball. They made a lot of mistakes. I have a family with the hell, so do I. And so what? Not rush. It was baseball. 98.6% perfect. They were the ghosts of all of those great, great, great heroes of mine. All those men who were, who were oh, gods. Oh, man. I used to write off and ask for their autographed pictures. And, oh, Wait patiently for them to come back. Somewhere in a box, I still have one that says, 
Richie Ashbury in full color, and there's one that says Robin Roberts, and there's one that says Stan Lapata. They're and still there. one that says, Bob, this is the pawn. Then I got to thinking about all those uh, other giants that have passed through that stadium. Uh, hey, maybe you don't know who Chico Fernandez is. Well, maybe, that's yeah, okay. You're not supposed to, I guess. He was just a baseball player who played for the Phillies, and when the Phillies weren't a very good team. Chico! But there were all those other people. Mickey Mantle. He'd been right there. Mickey Mantle in the same baseball stadium. Yogi Berra. Yogi Berra crashed Yogi behind the very same plate that I threw at yesterday. And Stan Musial stood there and swatted balls, and so did Hank Aaron and, and the Duke and Roy Campanella and Sandy Koufax and Willie Stargell. My oh, God. terrible, mean, miserable, nasty men. Steal victories from Back. my heroes. Oh, and so many more guys like Whitey Ford. A 
boycott of the company Exxon. Wojciech. Well, you know, there, there is no such thing Wojciech as a boycott Wojciech Jelaszewski. Well, there is a boycott of the people who work there. The people, isn't the people, people it's the boycott. Decent, good, honest folks. Decent, honest. Sir, 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 sir. Nothing could be more wrong. Nothing could be further from the truth. Than to punish those people for what they're doing. Something like 99 of the retail outlets that carry the Exxon sign are independently owned. And then there are the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people who work directly for the company, the millions who work indirectly for the company, who don't have nest eggs, who don't have golden parachutes. Give me your micro. after three to talk to me but anyway when i returned his call he started telling me about uh, what was going on with jury williams in boston and all these other talk shows i think they run the country because of the great t-bag campaign and the kid asked me a lot of really dumb stupid questions five six times and that's just gary dismissed him and hung up on it stern but in essence he was asking you know how i felt about that if i minded i mean literally it's what he said do you mind if they do this maybe he didn't know who i was I guess that's why I asked if I mind. But nonetheless, of course, you know, people are entitled to do whatever, whatever they want to do. This is America. You're allowed to be as stupid as you want to be. And I just pulled the kid off. No, no. I got my, my life that evening while watching no, the news. No, no. I guess it was on CNN. I saw somebody else going through this great charade of cutting up an Exxon credit card. And again, calling for a boycott on the Exxon company. And the first that's thing I like this. was some guy in greasy overalls. Uh-oh. Who works at a refinery somewhere? Who's got two kids? One needs new braces this year. The other one's just going into junior college. Uh, there is that tuition bill. Maybe it's not that big, but you know, big well, butt. still got to be paid. Big butt, big butt. And I thought about him being laid off. You see, they never lay off the president, but they do lay off the guy in the greasy overalls. And then I thought about a woman who works in a billing office somewhere. It's hot out today. And her paycheck is a second paycheck to help on that mortgage that they just oh, took out. Say, and she'll be laid off. God only knows what will happen to the mortgage. And then I thought about somebody who worked in a warehouse somewhere. And then it was the rest driving a forklift truck, a story. single parent. And they'll be laid off. They never lay off the chairman of the board because they're the kinds of people who get hurt in something like a boycott. And the big guys, they'll just they'll just wait it out for a while. Hell, you guys will forget it in a week or two or a month or two months or three months. It doesn't make any difference. And the company won't really be that drastically affected because they will save money by laying off people like the guy at the refinery and the one in the warehouse and the one in the billing office. And life will go on just fine and super dandy for them. As a matter of fact, while they're doing that, they may even figure out ways to eliminate those jobs and when you forget about the boycott. You know, so it'll be a leaner, meaner company with a fatter bottom line. And nothing will have changed. Not a damn thing will have changed. Oh, I know some of you will feel better because you cut up your Exxon cards. And Exxon will, by the way, if they notice that you haven't been charging recently, just take it upon themselves to send you another one that you'll just probably put right in your wallet. Hey. Hey. And nothing will have changed for the, for the good. What? But companies like Exxon should not get away with this. I mean, you know as well as I do, as well as they know that you and I know, that when this happens, instead of running out to try to clean up the oil, they ran to the damned boardroom. They sat there and they talked about PR effect. They sat there and they talked about possible litigation. They sat there and they talked about everything but what they should have been talking about. And that was yeah. getting off the rest and cleaning up that disaster and doing it quick right. and worrying about the other consequences later. later. And we know that they didn't do that. Nope. And they ought to be punished for that. They ought to be severely punished for that. But the way to do it isn't by punishing the guy that works at the refinery. So what is the other alternative? And I think there is one. 
It's the only way I can think of to punish the people who deserve to be punished, not the people who don't deserve it. Nationalize the company. Uh-oh. Confiscate it. Uh-oh, no. Confiscate the stock holdings of all the major stockholders. Confiscate the stock holdings of all the management people. Yeah. One way you might do that is by confiscating all of the stock that there ever was. That wasn't voted by proxy. See, the small stockholders, they tend to vote by proxy. The large stockholders and the management people don't. That's one easy way to determine who might and who might not have their stock confiscated. I don't want to take the stock of widows and orphans. I don't want to take the stock of a mom and pop who have 712 shares of Exxon stock that they've scrimped and scraped all their lives to buy. No, I don't. they're not owners of the company. Hell, they're dumped on by the company as much as you and I are. But I would love to get that guy that's got 112,000 shares, wouldn't you? I would love to get the shares of the chairman of the board. And I can't think of a better way that when a company messes up, then to in essence nationalize it, and then turn around and sell it back. Now, I don't want the federal government running Exxon. They can't deliver my mail. No, I want them to confiscate the shares from the people who run it, who made those mistakes, who, did, who were the careless people, and then reissue the stock on the market. And confiscate it without compensation. What do you think? I think I just that way you wouldn't be punished. <laughs> you get the people who are genuinely and truly responsible for irresponsible management. Do you have the guts to do something like that? Do you have a gazungas? To do something like that? Do you ever think about something like that? Does it seem to make sense to you? Does it seem to make one hell of a lot more sense than a showy boycott? Show Running off half cocked without boycott. thinking about what the hell you're doing with your talk show. Showy boycott. Now let's boycott it. So let's, let's cut up the credit yeah. cards. I don't want to get the TV news people over here. Let me give you the telephone numbers. 461-9352 in Vanillas. 461-WFLA. Hillsboro 990-9352-990-WFLA. It's not a poll. It's not a sense of the audience. It's us. It's a, you know, a three-part question. We can either boycott Exxon, we can confiscate the stock of the big boys, or we can forgive and forget, which is probably the American way. 990 9352 in Hillsboro, 4. Of action against a corporation that has done some horrendous deeds. Well, I, I uh, my, personally, I don't think that there, the, you know, you got your corporate raiders, you got everybody that. No, no, just, we're not talking about corporate takeovers. Have you been reading the newspapers recently? Yes, sir. Okay, well, you know that Exxon has sat on their asses for a month and destroyed, a, you know, an incredibly large area of, yes, the, sir. of the Alaskan coastline. Yes, sir. Well, now we have a lot of people that are really PO'd at Exxon, and they want to boycott the company, which is only going to hurt the workers. The workers, right. Right, so I can only think of one way to hurt the people who ought to be hurt, the owners. Okay, well... Take yeah. it away from them. Well, how are we going to do? You're going to you're talking about you government takeover. I mean, national. When you're saying nationalized, you mean the government is going to take over this company? I I believe that's what is normally meant. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, the only people that run the government are us. And if we if there's not enough people out there that have enough sense to run this company. And everybody's going to still, I don't care what you do, everybody's still going to be on the lookout for themselves. They're going to CYA themselves. That's all they're going to do because that's all, the, so far, that's all the United States is, is saying. John, I, th I, think that, I think that you should, for this particular topic, I think there's another number that you should use, 522-0570, 522-0570. Temple Terrace, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Bob, good yeah. afternoon. Afternoon. How are you? Fine. Bob, Bob, uh, I think it's uh, the American people are not ready to take over Exxon. We Why witnessed not? what they did to AT and T, and we stood by, and uh, nothing happened. What? Uh, what the hell does that have to do with anything? I'm talking about a punitive takeover. Uh, yes, but what we have to realize with Exxon is that 
What we had here was a disaster in Alaska. But the yeah, I think everybody realizes that. What we, no, we, what we have here is a company that did nothing for almost a month. That's and, what we have here. And, 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 and by taking over the company, the American government, government only did that one other time with GAF during World War II. And for years, which was a German-owned company, making munitions and other products here in the United States. And for about 20 years after World War II, the United States government ran GAF. I, 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 believe, I believe I said I didn't want the United States government running Exxon. I believe what I suggested is those shares be immediately resold. But it's just as with your argument of whether a person makes $4 an hour or $7 an hour with Eastern Airlines, you know, that, that doesn't make a difference. If the government takes over I, I, Exxon... I, uh, sir, sir... <clears throat> The, the chairman of the board, the president, the CEO, the executive vice president, the senior executive vice president. They uh, control of, very few shares. Uh, sir, I, I, was, I was in the middle of a sentence. Go ahead. Uh, the Chase Manhattan Bank, who in essence uh, decides who's going to be on the board of directors. Uh, you know, Harvard University, which in essence decides who's going to be on the board of directors. All of those people who vote their own shares in essence who play an active role in the ownership and day-to-day, -day, well, not actually day-to-day, -day, but play an active role in the ownership and the management of the company, they are the ones who should pay and pay through the nose. Now, it would seem to me that the next time something like this happened, these, you know, Chase Manhattan Bank, Citicorp, Harvard University, I don't know, maybe even Terry Jacobs, who knows, it would seem to me that the next time that something like this happens, those people would make damned sure that management didn't sit around on its ass. You know, uh... That's the only way I know of. Bob, I drive a truck for a living. I, I, don't, I don't care what you do for a living. Okay. That's irrelevant. But, do, you but, know, do you know of a better way to make manage, management responsive to their own fault? Is it their own fault? Is it... Is, is, yes, sir. Is, when they do nothing in a disaster like this except worry about getting sued... Do you know a better way to make management responsive to their own shortcomings and faults? No, I don't. Thank you ever so much. Uh, St. Petersburg, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello, Bob. I don't call you very often because I don't agree with you that much. My name is Mac. Don't need your name or why you don't call. All right. I was in the oil business. Don't the need your life history 11 either. million gallons of oil that was spilled, the gasoline... Sir, uh, sir, I believe I asked, boycott, confiscate, or forgive and forget. All right, then uh, let's just forget it, because uh, uh, you don't want to hear me out. No, sir, I don't want to hear about your life history, but I would like I to don't know where you're I don't want to tell you about my life history. Sir, All I said, boycott, I was in the confiscate, business. or forgive and forget, which is it going to be? Do you know? Well, now, it's entirely up to you. You can push the button. I don't care what. What the hell? I pushed it. Love this house. I'll buy it. Stood there in front of the television cameras and said, well, you guys are going to have to pay for this, you know. Hey, you can't expect us to pay for it. <laughs> silly people, silly consumers. And remember how, remember how teed off you were about that one? Well, why, why are you having such a difficult time grasping a new concept, grasping the concept of making the people who are responsible for this pay for it? I mean, what, what are you, some kind of a jerk? Then didn't you notice what you paid at the gas pump the last time you filled up? Not a penny is coming out of the pocket of the large stockholders of this company. Not a penny! Not a penny is coming out of the pockets of the management of this company. Not a penny! Every time this kind of thing happens... You lost your program, that's all. But it's always passed on to the consumer. Aren't you tired of it? Did it ever dawn on you to pass it on to the guy that owns the place? Unbelievable. Tarpon Springs, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Yes, Bob, I uh, kind of concerned about myself. I'm agreeing with you for a change. I think it's a fantastic subject and a great idea. Uh, I think it'd also work in the Lorenzo case. There, uh, it's a lot of cases that would have worked. We don't have any way to go to them, but how are we going to find a legislator to uh, defend the public interest on this? Well, uh, what are you doing next uh, election? Well, I think everybody should address their legislator on how they stand on those areas. No, I meant why don't you run? Excuse me? I meant why don't you run? <laughs> I had my fellow politics in the years past. Oh. And, uh, it's a frustration. Uh, they're afraid to take a stand against uh, potentially, uh, you know, PAC money. 
Well, I guess a lot of people are afraid to take a stand like yourself. Well, I think it's a consideration when we go to the polls, though, to ask our uh, candidates uh, how they stand on that issue. Uh, it's breaking the norm. It's, uh, it's a little bit different, but by God, I believe you 100%. Uh, you know, why? Well, I guess that makes a hell of a lot more sense to ask the chairman of the board to pay for it than it does to ask me. I'm 100% with you. I got no Exxon stock. Uh, <laughs> I don't have any Exxon stock either, but they're the ones that make the decisions, and the people that pay for it are the guys that are working on the plant. And it just seems to me to be utterly ludicrous to ask their employees to pay for this as well. Well, I, for one, would dearly hear, love to hear a solution to uh, presentation of the legislature on it, uh, how to go about it, some good direction on it. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of people that uh, would not even address it because it's too controversial. I don't see why. I thank you very much. Good luck. Take care. Well, good luck to you. 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 461-9352 in Pinellas. One line open in each county. Zephyr Hills here on the air at 970 WFLA. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Zephyr. I, I think that, uh, I really, I think that uh, they should uh, nationalize or attempt to take at least what they could for the big ones. Uh, boycotting. People think they're just not buying Exxon fuel as a boycott. They're into so much stuff. I have no idea what they're into, but you know it's more than just petrol. Well, besides, if we come up with an entire list of what they're into, so what? Why hurt the innocent employees that's and other guys like right. you and me? That's exactly right. They, you know, they're like, they're, they're just couple, they're just poor little, you know, schmucks like you and me trying to make a living. You better believe it, and uh, there are an awful lot of big schmucks who are running the show. They're the ones that ought to pay. That's exactly right, and I feel that, uh, that there should be a way to get them, and, and uh, you know, they're hiding, uh, they hide under the umbrella, the corporate umbrella, and I uh, think that, uh, that they're immune. And yet, uh, you know, all the corporate, the corporations will take the rap, you know, and I think, well, we'll just, we'll just stand back off the side. And there's a lot of people that, that, uh, that did not make decisions and did not act and uh, just really got caught with their pants down on the thing. Well, it also just drives me insane that these, you know, frankly, these idiot talk show hosts who think they're running the country these days coming up with a, the boycott. Uh, uh, the that's, idea, no, like, are, that's ridiculous because, I mean, you know, what are you going to, you know, you think you just need to quit buying a gasoline? Big deal. Cutting up the credit cards. Oh, big deal. Hey, you know, so what? You know, like you said, that's that's such a small. That's just the tip of the old proverbial iceberg. You know, it goes much, much deeper than that. All the stuff. I mean, it would probably make your, your well, the average guy's head spin to find out where how much of their dollar really goes to Exxon every day. Now let me ask you a question, and not to be a smart ass. Why did you think of it? Why? I'm sorry. Why did you think of it? Think of what, sir? Confiscating the company. Confiscating it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That's a, that's a good question, to be honest with you. I probably hadn't really pondered it until you, until I heard you bring it up. But you always make me think. You've made me think for a long time. Well, it's, it's just that there are so many instances of this. Uh, some of them, frankly, by Exxon previously, some by other companies, uh, not just oil companies. And I, it, I just don't understand why no one else has ever well, thought of it before. This is true, you know, and, and, uh, and really, it, it transcends just, uh, just this oil thing. I mean, it can go, uh, there's so many things, and I think that's one of the reasons why, of course, one reason why people incorporate is to protect themselves in case something goes wrong, to protect the individuals. Uh, you know, the corporation takes the rap, but very rarely do they get to the CEO and people like that. And the best way to get to him is in his pocket. Oh, God Almighty, yes. You hit him in the, you hit him in the, in the hip pocket, and uh, they, they take notice. They sh- certainly do. Certainly. Well, you know, it won't help this time, but maybe it might help the next it time. If, maybe. If, enough, if enough people could, uh, if, if movement, or, you know, if there was just enough fervor out there where enough people just even, even mentioned it, even just the threat of it, the thought of it. I mean, I understand accidents, and I'm sure you do, too. Absolutely. And, and I think that uh, had they really jumped on this one, I would have said, well, you know, okay, damn it, you know, it was an accident, all right. That's right. I mean, you know, stuff happens. You know, we know that. I mean, they didn't do it on purpose. I'm, I'm feeling almost certain of that. But 30 days later, That's before... Right. They're still uh, out there fighting it, and, uh, you know, the poor... Uh, as well as that cowardly bushy in the White House, too. Well, that's probably true. I mean, there's no reason. I mean, that should have been, that, that, that should have been mobilized. I mean, that, that cost for hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, if there's any reason to mobilize the military, that was one. If only there was some way, uh, some way of, for example, calling a special line at the White House and saying, uh, you know, okay, I know he's busy, but... Uh, in between appointments, could you go in there and ask him basically what he thinks of this idea? That's right. That's right. Boy, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you just love to see the expression on Bushy's yeah. face? Yeah. Oh, uh, probably. Well, I'm actually, I'm glad there isn't a line like that because I might give him a stroke, and we know what happens then. Oh my God! Thank you much. Thank you. Bye. Captain, the the woman who made the chocolate chip. Sir, excuse me. And if she's ever fool enough to come back in, sir, we're going to chain you to the wall. 
and just, you know, how do you make chocolate chip cookies for us for the rest Can you tell me where Del Mabry is? Sure. Chocolate chip pie was, was not exactly right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Back to, uh, uh, the truth of the matter is that we're not chocolate chip cookies. Two miles? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That's what they amounted to. But nonetheless, back to the phones. Oh, 144 and 99 Del Mabry. Clear water, you're on the air at 970 WFLA High Clear. Well, I, as long as I get to Del Mabry, yeah. So just go down here two miles to the shopping center, and that's, that's Del Mabry. The first traffic lunch is people in Lake Magdalene. Yeah. Now, be there maybe one orange girl with some little sponsors, but you want to go, you can't miss it. Okay. You don't know when you get there. Thanks. Thanks. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, if Michael and I open up, we got Bob and Mike's lemonade stand. Uh -huh. Listen, huh? We put out a bad batch of lemonade. Or, you know, okay, we don't put out a bed. We'll, we'll try to keep this That's the same. two miles. We open up down by City Hall, and we knock over a picture of our lemonade, and it kills a bush in front of City Hall. Well, you know, City Hall's going to look good. Mike and I look to pay for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if we don't pay for it, they're not going to say, well, all right, then why don't you just, why don't you just, you know, charge more for your lemonade? Uh, what? And get people who are walking by here to pay for it. Uh, That's ludicrous, isn't it? This car in a full atmosphere on TV of people uh, taking uh, little bags of oil with their credit cards and sending them back. And, uh, you know, whether they do it or not, it's going to affect absolutely nothing except, if anything, the person that should not be affected by it. Meanwhile, Chase Manhattan sits back and collecting their check. They'll buy benefits from this thing somewhere on the line. Probably will. Uh, but just a fantastic idea and a great show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. 990 -9352. In Hillsboro 990 WFLA. Uh, now we go to uh, oh, Clearwater again. Hi, Clear, you're on the air. You're, you're, you're on the air, Clearwater. Uh, you're, you're, you're on the radio uh, station. Uh, this, uh, the idea you have is in, in theory is good. In theory, okay, well, I, uh, I just see a lot of problems with it. Uh, well, let's talk about it. All right, initially, um, I think your uh, slow response on this uh, first off was the fact that there's a lot of people out there that really don't understand the theory behind nationalization. Uh, secondly, I think that... Uh, well, I, I don't like, I'm not pleased with the word nationalization. Let's, you know, let's use the real term here that, that applies confiscation. Okay. Uh, I, think, uh, I think that would have been uh, more readily accepted. But I'm seeing uh, it, it's kind of... It's, it's kind of idealistic the way I see it because I feel like, first off, if... If we went to a nationalization or a confiscation, uh, it, it would probably be tied up in the courts for a, a long time. Uh, therefore, it would give uh, Exxon an even better excuse to sit back on their laurels and not take care of the, the problem at hand. Uh, it's, uh, there's, a, there's a complex out there, uh, industrial complex, that's so hard to crack. Um, it, it would definitely... It would serve. It would. It would uh, cure the problem if we could do it one time. It would. That's right. Because I mean, you know what happened the, the day that the the tanker ran aground? They called the bean counters in, and they said, "Okay, bean counters, what's going to be cheaper, paying for the cleanup or paying the litigation that, that will ensue?" Well, sure. And then they waited for the bean counters to come up with a number. Well, there again, though, you're you're dealing with people who are being paid to make a buck. To be bean counters. I mean, that's what they're there for. Now, that's not right. But it's the facts. Well, there are other things that they can use the bean counters for. You know, we're not going to put the bean counters out of work by doing this. Well, I'm not, uh, as far as the bean counters are concerned, I, I, I couldn't care less. But what you're dealing with is you're dealing with uh, some CEOs whose job it is is to turn a profit and cut the losses. Um, now, well, it's, also, it's also their job that the company, you know, perform in a responsible manner. Yes, indeed. Uh, to be policed better. And like, like I say, I think that if this could be affected, it would, uh, it would just, uh, it would have a, a rippling effect that would, that would stop a lot of this stuff. But the initial, uh, you know, putting this into, into effect would be very difficult. And I don't, it wouldn't, uh, I think what you'd have to do is you'd have to, uh, more or less, if you, if we decided to really go ahead with this, we'd have to decide that we were foregoing, curing, or cleaning this oil up because it would slow it down and go for a different goal. I, I would agree with you that it would be very difficult to pull it off with current laws, but all it would really take is a special act of Congress saying, you know, whoops, there it goes, and then let the people who were 
shall we say, uh, wronged in this, try to demonstrate in the course that they were wrong, but they would just lose automatically. Uh, yeah. They would lose their stock automatically. They would therefore lose their jobs automatically. Uh, with the uh, uh, special act of Congress, it's yeah. been done before. Well, so what we're getting back to is not necessarily uh, calling for a nationalization, but uh, so going, the other way on the 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 uh, going to the Congress six. to change uh, the present um, groundwork. Uh, if you go for uh, confiscation, you're oh, muddying the, the water. Well, through the course of that would be a disaster. Yeah. You know, we're, we're talking about a whole new set of of, of right. options and rules right. and regulations and laws here. Right. Thank you, my friend. Appreciate it, Bob. I appreciate it. One line available is in, uh, where is it? Pinellas, 461-9352, 461-WFLA. Just confiscate that stock and tomorrow turn around and sell it. Put it on the market in, a, again, a timely fashion. If it's going to be like 48% of the stock, you can't dump that on the market tomorrow. But, hell, start selling it off at a quarter of a, a percent a, a day and, you know, just put the money back in the Treasury. Hell, take that money and put it back in the Treasury. The U.S. Treasury, not Exxon's. What would that accomplish? Well, not a great deal in this particular case. It's not going to get those... Those shorelines cleaned up. It's not going to bring back any of the bird or other wildlife. But what it might do is the next time there's an accident like this, instead of calling in the accountants to see, well, is it going to be cheaper to clean this up or is it going to be cheaper to just, you know, put up with a lawsuit, uh, report back to me in two weeks when you have the figures, please. Maybe instead of doing that, they'll say to hell with the cost. <laughs> hey, we got to save this. Let's, let's get off our dust and do something here. So I would ask you, in a case like the Exxon, which would you prefer? Boycott, confiscate the stock of the big mucky muckies, or forgive and forget like we're going to end up doing, and you pay the bill. Bel Air, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bell. Hi, Bob. Hi. I'm in kind of a sticky situation with my own feelings. About well, you're not caught in oil spill, I hope. I'm a, I'm a staunch environmentalist. Mm-hmm. And I'm also a shareholder of Exxon. Very minor. Inherited some uh, widows and orphans stock a few Wouldn't years ago. Wouldn't touch back. your stock. I don't think you, you know, you have no responsibility in this. You're just a little schmo like I am. Yeah, but what I'm worried about, I'm afraid that what you want to do won't, won't accomplish what you want to do. Well, I'm, I'm afraid of one of, you know, protecting the value of my shares. When that's dumped back on the thing, I know you're going to do it real slow, but still, there, there, it might cause a, a panic, and, the, and the, the price of Exxon could go down, which is not good for me. And also, the, the possibility that the, the new management or the new people up at the top are going to, you know, take it out on the shareholders and lower our dividend, and you know, it's, it's not fair to the widows and orphans and, and the people at the bottom that just have a. Mm, wasn't fair to the otters either. Pardon me. Wasn't fair to the otters either. Oh, yeah, I agree. I agree. And I, 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 th I think that if you were going to do something like that and get some, you know, uh, pull some money out of Exxon, that, um, you know, some of it should go up there, you know, to help the environment. Well, let me, well, of course, obviously. Uh, but let me give you some other examples of things in the recent past where we might have used this type of an approach instead of the other type of approach where, in essence, the the consumer, whatever the hell that means, ends up paying the bill. A few years back, Ford Motor Company, the Pinto, clearly demonstrated in court that they made a, and I believe it was an $8 decision, would have cost them $8, if memory serves me, to correct the problem per vehicle. And they called on the bean counters, and the bean counters said, well, bottom line is, uh, you know, the odds are that so many of these suckers will blow up, and uh, the odds are that so many people will sue successfully and they will get uh, this kind of a settlement. So, in essence, it will be cheaper to let these cars blow up and settle out of court or in court if we have to than to pay, pay the $8 to solve the problem. Now, it would seem to me, and, you know, I'm very fond of Ford Motor Company products. I've been buying them now for quite some time. But it would seem to me that uh, that was such a reprehensible decision on the part of the management of that company that suing Ford Motor Company for four or five hundred million dollars or even a billion dollars which is only going to be taken and turned around and passed off onto the people who buy Tauruses and Continentals and it was it would seem to me that what should have been done is for the senior management and the major stockholders of Ford Motor Company to to relinquish their stock and, and just get out because that was such a reprehensible decision they deserve to lose it don't you think? 
Well, you, you can't blame Exxon for that, though. No, we're I'm not blaming Exxon, Exxon for that. I'm, I'm we're talking Exxon. about oil. And the, the other thing you were saying about the, about the prices going up, well, Amoco's going up, Shell's going up, yeah. Phillips 66 gas is going That's up. That's right. And, um, Cause they're all, you know, they're all taking advantage of this. As you, know, you well know, ba- basically the um, the price of oil is set as a world you know world market type thing, and uh, yes, but so it's, it's, it's but not it's not like you know your example are, of but the, the um, prices are set just like any other commodity. They're set on fear and greed. They okay, go up that, that's with what greed. The whole stock market. Of course, of course, it's called supply and demand in polite circles, but it's really fear and greed. Well, I'm glad I'm glad we at least are in the right circles to be talking about it that way. I think politically, it's going to be real hard to sell. Because it's not the American way. Free enterprise, go in there and uh, and, um, and and sh- you know basically shaking up a company and then getting out. It's going to be real hard to sell politically. I don't even know where the where the politicians would begin to try to get something done like that. What do you? But think? my goodness, wouldn't you like to see the expression on their faces? <laughs> I'm going to miss you Friday at Calb's Cove. I'm going to be down that way Thursday, and we're going to dinner there Thursday night. Well, yeah, why don't you just stay over for a second night? Yeah, well, we can it's absolutely a very do. Just take, get a motel down there, and what the heck? Oh, come on! I'm sure they'll let you sleep on the floor for one night. You know, bring your bring your um, sleeping bag with you. Can I can I do one unsolicited testimonial for Calp's Cove? Sure. Real quickly, I've been listening to talk radio for a long time, and I uh, went to Calp's Cove when it first opened. Had a bad experience that I'll never go back there again. And I started listening to the commercials on FLA, and I listened to Uncle Dickie. And once you've had a bad experience at a restaurant, a lot of people just turn around and just vote with their pocketbook and never go back. Well, I know Uncle what Dickie, Uncle Dickie, talked me into it, and I said, "I'm going to go." And then you talked about it, and I went, and it was great. It's top notch. They, they, whatever happened is either that night or they've turned it around, and it's it's first rate. And I used to be in the restaurant business, and I, I know it from both sides. So down in my place. It certainly is. I thank you much. Have a good one, Bob. Be good. Take care. Bye. 990-9352 in Hillsboro. 461-9352 in Pinellas. Ah, uh, not again. It was two Hi, glorious days. I'm not hearing that miserable song. Didn't you hear me out on your, out on your front lawn over the weekend playing that and, and saying, Hi, Bob. Oh, you're not into that again with a yeah. pan flute? Yeah, doing my Zumbier imitation. Oh. That was me. Oh. You thought it was a bad dream. Well, you, you're not still wearing this, you know, the skin color tights, are you? The leader hosen. Well, how, how was your weekend, Gar? Oh, boy. It was, uh, <clears throat> it, was of, it was great, Bob. Lo- lots of, lots of persons? Yes, yes, just persons, uh, just coming out of the woodwork, Bob. You re- really enjoyed the party at the, uh... Oh, uh, Bob, him, I bet I was meaning to ask you about that. Must have been some mixed directions or something there. I went to Tampa Stadium, like you said. You said between three and... Tampa Stadium? Three and eight, didn't you say, or something Tampa, like that? Tampa, no, that's the new Sun Dome uh, over, over in St. Petersburg. Yeah, that, that's that's uh, what we meant. Oh. I, I clearly wrote was. two or three times here. I wrote down. I still have my notes. Tampa Stadium. Well, Tampa you must have been, You know, with, with all of the noise up there. I'm going to check the yeah. longer tapes. I'm going to yeah. check the logger tapes, Bob. Yeah, that, that, that would be the I best thing. I think you fooled to... me. Uh, how's the weather? Uh, the traffic. <laughs> traffic, yeah. Well, how's the weather, too? Well, it's about, what, 82, 83 degrees. A little hazy, but... ...around the Grand Prix Car Wash. Three locations in South Tampa, 3622 Gandhi Boulevard. It's about a half a block east of the Crosstown. In Seminole, 10471 Park Boulevard. That's about a half a block east of Seminole Boulevard. And in Clearwater, 1880 Gulf to Bay Boulevard, across from the Clearwater High School Grand Prix Car Wash. Sarasota, hi, Sarah. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi. I um, I think right before you broke for the news last hour, you, you had the key word, and that's responsibility. Where are we going to draw the bottom line for responsibility and accountability with these large corporations? If, in fact, the... Reality is that the cash flow and and uh, the overall performance of the corporation is what they're most concerned about. Then these folks should be held accountable with that cash because it seems like is the only time a corporation will take some sort of action 
for itself for a problem that's happened that's the responsibility is when it hits its bankroll and that's the only time they it's it's very few and far between it seems that a corporation will take preventative measures for something like this happening well it seems to me that when you talk about private ownership when you talk about free market free enterprise getting government off your back etc 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 then you ought to be willing and able to accept full responsibility and i just don't know any other way to do that except to say you know it just isn't working when you say oops no i can't no i can't see of it uh, happening in really like any other way also you see it 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 all boils right back to the point it seems like it, it really seems like most american corporations fail to take action or to take precautions against something happening to take these preventative steps well, it's against also, them. It's also American government is failing to yeah, they sure hold are. the feet to the fire. I mean, you know as well as I do, there's going to be some type of EPA uh, oh, investigation and, and fact right, finders. And, yeah. It'll probably even be like a $15 million fine. Oh, Whoa. sure. <laughs> and, and then that'll get tossed right back on to us, the consumer, and higher prices overall. And uh, we'll give probably them more be tax deductible, too, for them. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. In fact, they've been saying that all of the costs for the cleanup will be written off completely. And I think that's a crock. It certainly is, because, again, it, it makes you and I pay for it twice. Twice. I know. And it's just going over and over and over again. Well, uh, you know, these, these dudes are only getting richer. No, 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 no. I'm tired of it. There's got to oh be a better my. way. Sick and tired of it. And, yes, it is it, it, it is a radical radical concept and the political ramifications, who, who, who knows? I think one of the previous callers was correct in saying that I don't think our country is unfortunately ready for something this drastic. I don't know how drastic it is, if you must know the truth, because to tell you the truth, I can't begin to conceive of it ever being the case. No, that if we were to enact this tomorrow, I think it would change overnight the way that we did business in this country, because nobody was going, nobody would take the chance of it. Responsibility and accountability would move back up into the mainstream for the first time. I mean, you know, the next years. time the the bot rider sat down to the boardroom with a door closed to try to figure out whether to spend the eight bucks. Maybe the bottom line could be a little bit thicker, but I, I would like my, my portfolio to remain thick. As, for as long as possible, and who, and, and, and you see, it's these, it's these silent investors that sit on the, uh, that sit on the stockholders board and vote, vote for new programs in the corporation. That is where the crux of the matter boils right down to, and I think that your whole concept, although maybe not feasible, Thank you, Frank. Thanks, Bob. Take care. Don Richards standing by at the WFLA News Desk. Donald.
To the phones again we go, this time at St. Petersburg. Hi there, St. You're on the air, 970 WFLA. Good afternoon, Bob. Good afternoon. I can't tell you how pleased I am to hear your, your position on this. I've been saying it all week, and my family it looks at me like I'm crazy. But it seems to me when anybody does a criminal act and they're confiscating the things, like you said, that's, that's the logical thing to do. These people have made $88 billion last year over the, over the whole earth world, worldwide. And so you're right, you're not going to hurt them that way. But there's two things that particularly uh, made me realize you can't hurt them except by the way you say. Uh, remember in the beginning where they had lobbied Congress for single hull tankers to save money? Yep. And then the second thing that I read uh, in a, a reprint of an editorial from the New Republic, uh, Hendrik Hertzberg, he writes that uh, they boosted their profits a few years ago by getting rid of 80,000 uh, of their 182 employees. That was including all, not some, all of their oil spill specialists. Now these people are incompetent and negligent. Now, the, mm -hmm. the uh, legal and the legal first. I was hoping that I could see Flat Fist is on. And you want to take the people who own the corporation and slap their hands and slap them damn hard. Uh, exactly. And then yesterday in the business page, they report that uh, if this is going to create a profit windfall for the big oil companies. And in July, when they, when they report it, they're going to face another public outcry. So it's, it's going to be yelling all the way around. I uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Bob. Be good. Off it is now to Tampa. Hi, Tampa. You're on the air at 970 WSLA. Hi, Bob. Hope Bye. you got the book I left you. I know you uh, kind of related to some hard times you went through in your life. Maybe it helped uh, help you out with them. Uh, I gave it to Mike when I was over there. This thing about Exxon, um, it got me all upset. I was first, you know, people think your idea is so outlandish, revolutionary, but... This is closer to home, and people, just because it's not in a contingent 48, they don't look at it. This happened to Americans, and it's affecting the American economy. And the way Exxon came off with the audacity, like, well, we're going to be good guys, and we're going to go out and clean it up, and here, here it is now, how long? And it's not even 10% cleaned up. And this, if this would happen to somewhere on the East Coast, or even just around Florida, they said from Key West to Jacksonville alone on the East Coast would be completely covered. Well, you know, as the longer they wait, the more the quote-unquote nature breaks it up. So someday, somewhere, uh, you know, a slicko maybe 10 by 10 feet will wash up uh, in, in San Diego, and someday another slick will wash up uh, in Japan, and someday maybe if, uh, another little slick will wash up here in Florida, and they'll, they'll be relatively small, and they'll do mild little damage here, there, and the other place. No. Well, that big no, one they no, had, no, no. the big one they had in France, they're just, they had to, they're just now getting, we're like the oysters, I saw over the weekend a special where the, and just now, what, 10, 12 years later, just, there's oysters the are starting to grow disease, again. I believe you're referring to, that's Bill. And, um, and another, one thing about your plan is the way you want to do it, I like to see the money go back into some kind of research or con a vest for some kind of vessel or something that would clean this up, because it struck me funny, here, how, our, how much our economy runs is generated uh, on the coastline and here our number one competitor the big red menace is they're the ones that's got supposedly got the latest largest you know best equipped holy oil. moly i just thought of another possibility that we might do with the money in a situation like this that's put it for put it back to, into research for a non-petroleum fuel for a synthetic fuel it's, well that's another way of going yeah, it's just a way of preventing it it's, uh, you know, because when we, when we have to ask the Russians to come over here and do something for us, and here we're supposed to be the big leader of the, you know, the world, I think uh, something's definitely wrong, especially the way, you know, like our economy and our continent sets with uh, surrounded by an oceans on virtually three sides, and then with Hawaii and Alaska like it is, and the economies, that, the way they're run, we have to look out for our own kind. And as you said, if you go in between a Tampa and Apollo Beach, there's three Exxon stations. I know two of the people who work there. And they leased them, and they were reasonably successful. And the people ended up after two, three years, they had to give them up. They couldn't well, I, afford I think you've to do stumbled it. Upon, I think you've stumbled upon the key phrase here. We have to look after our own kind. And the fact of the matter is, chairmen of the board of large oil companies are not our own kind. Thank hey. you, my friend. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Two in Pinellas, 990-9352 in Hillsborough. Without going into any lengthy explanation for the benefit of those of you who may just be kind of joining us, in essence, I've asked a question that has three possible answers to it. In terms of the oil spill and responsibility for the oil spill in Alaska, 
Hopefully you would know about the oil spill in Exxon. There are a group of people who have suggested doing something about it. A group of people are some of my colleagues in this industry around the country. Brilliant men who have suggested boycotting Exxon. I think there may be two other possibilities instead of boycotting Exxon. Those other two possibilities would, of course, be to forgive and forget. That would certainly be the Christian thing to do. Or confiscate Exxon stock from high-level people in management. You know, I'll bet you that chairman of the board's got quite a few shares of that sucker stuffed under his mattress, you know what I mean? And possibly some other large shareholders. The, 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 the reason behind it, the concept behind this being that these people want the benefit of ownership, so they should also have some of the risk of ownership as well, wouldn't you think? You know, other cases that this might have applied in, for example, the, the Ford Pinto case several years ago, instead of suing Ford for $400 million or whatever it was, it would have only ended up being passed along, and it was. Confiscate the stock of the top Ford people, the ones who made the decision not to spend $8 to keep that, to keep that gas tank from being in a vulnerable position. Or another case that might apply in a situation like this would have been maybe something like Three Mile Island, a utility that just did not have good safety practices. I mean, an, an entire community was disrupted by this. God only knows what the long-term effect of this is. Those people have no business. I'm sorry, but the people who head up that public utility have no business whatsoever running it, and it is just unconscionable. The decent working men and women who have no choice but to do business with that utility are, in essence, eating it. I mean, I think it's time that the guys who are running the company started eating it. And we might take the proceeds. We're not talking about nationalization here. No, we're talking about confiscating the stock and then reselling it. You know, I, I, I don't want the, the Department of Interior running Exxon. No. Probably be worse than who does run it now. But I think that it might be reasonable. Well, but nonetheless, that's the premise. Boycott, confiscate the stock, or forgive and forget. They're, they're pretty much the choices. Two lines available, both of them in Hillsborough. 990 wfla St. Petersburg. Hi there, Sandy. You're on the air. How you doing? Fine, thank you. All right. Just, I definitely agree that we ought to uh, confiscate, the, confiscate the stock, or as Michael Serio put it, uh, he really had a good term, uh, uh, management stock seizure. That sounds like a better term, I think. But the only thing I'm wondering is that, like, how would that be, how, how do we go about that? We do that legislatively, if that's the case, it would take a long time and more likely be voted down, or do we do it like uh, a presidential order or something like that? Presidential order or an act of Congress? Well, an act of Congress can be kind of, can be kind of bought by these guys in, in, in some respects, unfortunately. Well, how would you, sir, if, if, this, if this were possible, how would you like to be the congressman or the senator who stood up in front of the television cameras to defend the pigs running Exxon who basically sat there chatting with the bean counters trying to see which would be the cheapest way of doing this. How would you like to be the one to stand there and defend them in front of national TV? Certainly, I wouldn't like to be in the guy. Uh, I don't think seat. anybody would like to be. Oh, yeah. And as far as the uh, presidential order is concerned, I mean, obviously, uh, the president makes the order and uh, federal marshals come in and grab all the stock. And obviously, that's not going to sit too well with the current uh, re resident of uh, Pennsylvania Avenue because he wouldn't necessarily like, he'd like, kind of like to have his job for another four years. Well, I think he'd be much more likely to keep his job for another four years if he issued the special order than, a, than again coming before the nation and trying to say, well, uh, mm, uh, my good friend, uh, uh, Harry Futzmacher, who runs Exxon, oh, God, uh, mm, his kids need braces, and I don't think, oh, God. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, def yeah, yeah, def yeah, definitely, but, um, so I, I don't know, but, 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 he drug his feet, but he drug his feet immediately, you know, when he saw that Exxon was dragging his feet. That could have been a prime opportunity for him to... Uh... That's because there's, there, there is nothing we can do to these people. Absolutely nothing. Georgie knows it. You know, Harry Futzmacher or whoever is he, he, who is running Exxon, he knows it. Everybody knows that we have utterly no real recourse. What are we going to do? Sue these people in court for $150 million? Yeah, they've got lawyers from here to California. Well, so what? I mean, all they have to do... Frankly, the cheapest thing for them to do would be to say, oh, okay, here's your $150 million. About it, and that would be kind of petty change to them. Absolutely. However, I feel reasonably confident that good old Harry Fuck Fuckmockster here has at least $150 million worth 
of Exxon stock, and it's going to kill him. Now, that's his lifelong accumulation of wealth. Harry's going to be real bummed out about that. So maybe the next time it happens, another Harry's going to do the right thing without worrying about bottom lines and quarterly reports and things of that nature. Well, definitely we have to have, uh, it's a drastic measure, but a drastic measure must be taken because all other measures have obviously failed and boycotting is certainly going to hurt just the little guys down people. the line. Yeah, like we always do. We always beat the wrong guy. Yep. Oh, by the way, um, my, my wife and I will be celebrating our first first wedding anniversary on the 6th of June, and we will certainly be over at Calico for that. Hey, fantastic. There's not a better place to do it. All right. You take care, Bob. I listen to you every day. I understand that. Uh, we've got the wrong guy in there. If we're going to try to get, uh, for instance, remember Harry Truman when he uh, nationalized the steel. Well, he didn't have any steel stock. But you've got uh, Bush, who is, you know, his whole background is CIA and oil. And I think it's the wrong guy to be, uh, you know, it's the fox in the hen house sort of thing. Well, again, if, if Congress and the Senate would propose this type of legislation, Bush would be virtually powerless to stop it. Uh, he would not want to stand, not if he wanted another four years, he would not want to stand before the country and say, well, you know, geez, it, it isn't fair to ask the owners uh, to take the hit. You should take the hit. <laughs> well, yeah. You know, that's, that's not a great way to get reelected. I, I don't disagree with you, but I can't see Congress uh, or the Senate or anybody getting their act together in time to um, to really make anything happen to Exxon has any teeth in it. Oh, this time around, no. It's, you know, you can't do, you can't legislate after the fact. Yeah, but I'd sure yeah. love to see it. I'd sure love to see it lurking there for the future. Well, the, the thing, the, the other thing that bothers me about this whole thing from right back in the beginning is the timing of this oil spill. Here we have OPEC finally getting their act together. Uh, they're raising the prices. Uh-huh. And now you've got this tanker running down a 10-mile wide channel. Uh-huh. And uh, it's like the prices were rising. It's, it's what, you know, the oil patch wants. They want the prices to go up however they have to do it. Is, is that a coincidence? I don't know. But it's, it's just there's too many unanswered questions on how the hell did it happen in it's the first It's a coincidence. Don't, don't get involved in conspiracies like that one. It is a coincidence. But there are a lot of other things that are going to come together in a reasonably short period of time. In all probability... It'll knock those prices right back down where they came from. My friend, I thank you very much. Okay. Take care. Yes, high, high above the Tampa Bay area, in his very own two-seater Stanley Steamer, our beloved Ron, washboard of a traffic reporter, the dangerous Harry McKendry. Calps Cove, Friday night. What time did that start Friday night, Bob? Oh, uh, it's, it's for couples only, Gar. <laughs> oh, northbound I-275 approaching Lois Avenue had a report of an accident there. It's okay, Bob. Don't worry about it. Uh, it's all out of the way, so it's not causing any big delays. 40th Street under I-4. That's uh, a breakdown. Apparently, after they broke down, they uh, got mad and left, so they left the car in the middle of the roadway there. That has been causing just a minor delay. You are able to get around it. Highway Patrol standing by there. And an earlier uh, problem, Howard Franklin Bridge, all back to normal now. East and westbound, that's moving along well. Northbound, Dale Mabry, very heavy traffic up toward Fletcher Avenue in the Carrollwood area. Right now, over... Hyde Park, I'm Gary McHenry, 970 WFLA Airborne Traffic. A surgeon making a tiny incision with a scalpel will cut thousands of human cells, while a surgeon working with a laser can isolate a few cells. Greater precision is one reason why surgery at the Florida Laser Center at Palms of Pasadena Hospital can be so much simpler than conventional surgery in many cases. Because precise surgery can mean less pain, less loss of blood, less anesthesia, and faster healing. In fact, for some patients, laser precision can transform a major operation into an outpatient procedure. Ask your doctor about the Florida Laser Center at Palms of Pasadena Hospital and call 1-800-448-6200 for a free illustrated brochure. That's 1-800-448-6200. 6200 because the more precise surgery is the less complicated the recovery there's a little extra magic there's a little extra magic there's a little extra magic on every sea escape cruise now there's a little extra magic on every sea escape cruise 
hearty breakfasts, mouth-watering lunches, and extravagant dinner buffets that are bigger and better than ever. International cuisine nights in our restaurants that will take you to faraway places. Dazzling new floor shows that will really floor you. An expanded children's program on every cruise that will keep kids spellbound. Plus non-stop music, dancing, and fun in the sun. Full day cruises on the magical Gulf of Mexico are only $79 per person plus port charges. Experience the magic now. Call your travel agent or sea escape at 1-800-432-0900. 1-800-432-0900. Registry, Bahamas. I don't know, Michael. Perhaps McHenry is the only person that I might recommend instead of getting a life of his own, which obviously he doesn't have. McHenry is the type of person I would recommend that really does get into talk radio. 24 minutes after the hour. I mean, what a shot, huh? 24 minutes after the hour of 5 o'clock. I'll, uh... I will assume that a fair number of you are very pleased with your homes, very proud of your homes. You've owned them for quite a number of years, and you've been fairly well settled in the neighborhood. Kids are in school, but the house could the house could use a, a little bit more room. Well, you can, you know, trot down to the bank. They'll probably give you, oh, geez, maybe 70, 75, 80 percent of the cost of a home improvement loan so that you can expand or update or modernize or whatever it is that you might want to do. And, hey, you've only got to come up with 20, 30 percent of 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 grand. Now, that's all you have to do so that you can do that home improvement. But, hey, it doesn't have to be that way, and it shouldn't be that way. Not if you want to increase your investment, and that's in essence what you're doing. I mean, hey, you've got equity in that house. The bank ought to take a little bit of the risk, too, because they're going to charge you a top dollar. They're going to make a pay through the nose. We don't have to pay through the nose, nor do you have to come up with a humongous amount of money if you want to do a home improvement. The folks at Town & Country Mortgage and Investment Corporation will finance it 100%. Yeah, you heard me right. 100%. There won't be any upfront fees. We'll get your, get your approval in like 24 to 48 hours in almost every case. The credit criteria, there isn't any. Good credit, bad, slow, indifferent? No. Town and Country Mortgage and Investment Corporation. First and second mortgages, low rates, fast service. Keyword here, fast service. In terms to fit your need, let me give you the telephone number, please. 264-2648. 264-2648. Licensed mortgage brokers. 14502 North Dale Mabry. If it has something to do with a mortgage, then Town and Country Mortgage and Investment Corporation is the place for you. Okay? Ah, uh, I want to tell you, we could be twinkling better in Hillsborough, if you know what I mean. 990 wfla to make Hillsborough twinkle. Wesley Chapel. Hi, Wesley. You're on the air at 970. Uh, how are you doing? Doing fine. Thank you. Uh, I think blaming Exxon is the wrong way to go because it's really Congress's fault. I don't blame Exxon. I blame the people that run Exxon. Uh, I blame the Congress because they set the national policy back in the early 70s. How's that? When they debated where to run the pipeline to. They had a choice, and they decided the national policy would be to run the pipeline to wherever it is, and then... Uh, well, you're talking about one very, very specific case. I'm talking about general corporate mismanagement. You know, it's easy for us to focus on a recent story, but I can think of a number of areas, and as a matter of fact, I just mentioned two that have nothing whatsoever to do with pipelines and oil that something like this would be applicable for. Well, if you want to blame the person responsible for something... You ought to look at who's really responsible for it. Well, well, the guy that's running the place, the guy that owns the place. Oh, uh, no. Well, yeah, I, well, I, I Congress... I beg your pardon is... if Michael and I go out and set up that lemonade stand and we mess up. You're going to come looking to us, man, because we own it. Uh, that's right. Now, uh, who set up the way that Exxon is handling this? And who, by law, directed them to do it this way? I, I beg your pardon. I don't believe there was any law whatsoever that said sit on your ass for a month and think about it to see which way is going to be the cheapest to do it. I don't believe there's any law whatsoever that requires them to do that. Are you aware of one? Uh, no, not Neither am I. Put that way. You know, and that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about reckless endangerment of the, of the environment. Uh, we're talking about a, a callous attitude, an absolutely callous attitude on the part of of Exxon, and, you know, frankly, in some cases, some of their, some of their buddies in the federal government. Well, in the pipeline, too, and like that. But what would you do? Damn the expense and uh, move from there? I, I've already told you what I'd do. I, I would make real sure 
that the people who ran Exxon are the ones who paid for it. That they were the ones who lost their interest in the company. They would they should forfeit their stock. That's the way I would see it. No, I, I don't think so because right. I, so, so so you end up paying for it. No, I mean not, not some guy worth one hundred and fifty million dollars. My God, don't ask him to pay for it. Not the guy that made the decision to kill all the uh, the wildlife and foul all the beaches. My goodness, don't ask him to pay for it. No, you pay for it. That's what you're saying. Why should you pay for it? The decision to clean it up, I agree, could have been handled better. But it's not going to work. Well, then there's the other issue here, my friend, and that is some of, some of my colleagues nationwide who want a boycott Exxon. So they want guys that work in the refinery and women that work in the office to pay for it. Because well, that's who's going to lose their jobs. Well, they're not no, going to lay off the chairman Exxon of the board. Good at all, I agree. You know, they're not going to lay off the chairman of the board. Maybe if they would, I might consider it. Hell, they'll probably give him a raise. Yeah, well, that's fine, too. Uh, but that's why I want to pin the responsibility where it belongs, on the Congress of the United States. Well, I'm afraid, you're just, you know, I'm afraid you're just not listening to the larger issue. You're focusing in just a little bit too narrowly. And, you know, because you, you still have a hard-on left over from when they were building the, the pipeline. Uh, I can understand that, but it's not, in essence, really what we're talking about here because we're not really talking about Exxon, per se. We're talking about corporate... Uh, corporate management that is not doing a good job. Corporate management that when they mess up, somehow end up passing the, the price off onto somebody else. And I'm tired of it, and I would think a lot of other people should be tired of it. But, my friend, I thank you much for the input. I genuinely do. 30 minutes after the hour, 5 o'clock. Problem with uh, helping them to survive. It's not in my best interest to put a couple of million people out of work. Right. Uh, but I, I don't think it's in, in anybody's best interest to allow corporate bigwigs, be it oil spills or, or unsafe power plants or, or whatever it is, I just don't think it is reasonable to allow these people off the hook. Agreed. But who's going to be strong enough or big enough in the federal government that isn't compromised to hold this guy's nose to the grindstone? Well, anybody that has your support. We're, we're seeing it right now, the Attorney General saying nothing. And he's the key figure in this whole thing to do take well, legal action that's, against them. That's because you haven't asked him to. You see, any any congressman, any senator, any any cabinet officer, anybody that has the support of the people is is the one who's strong enough to do it. I think big oil and petroleum industry are very powerful. Oh, I wanted to mention, by the oh, way... they're only powerful, sir, because you don't exercise your power. Oh, I write to them. I, I am in contact with my congressman. He writes newsletters, and I yeah, just go back to him, too. He's an early handful of chairmen to the board of big oil companies, they can't elect anybody. They can give money, but money doesn't do any good if, if you don't have the people voting for you to start with. Right. Now, Saudi Arabia owns about 48 or 49 percent of Exxon. Could be. I yeah. could, I'll, I'll buy it. I don't know. Yeah, they own that. Now, but I want another thing I want to bring out, the synthetic uh, oil and gasoline. There was a natural gas study made under Carter administration which say, said we had a 3,000 year supply available of natural gas. And a bureaucrat got fired. He's a low-level bureaucrat who made the study. He revised it twice. And when he wouldn't revise it any lower, he said, that's the figure. They fired him. We have a boat. We have the gas. We have the coal reserves. There's no excuse for us to be... Well, that, well it's not what we're talking about today. We're not talking about, do we have, you know, reserves of, of fossil fuels? I, I, I don't know. You know, no. I've got to take somebody's word. And so, therefore, I'm not qualified to do a show on it. But I do think I'm qualified to do a show on what is best in registering our displeasure to companies like Exxon, you know, boycotts or what I've suggested or just forgive and forget. Because uh, I, I don't know anything about, you know, how to calculate reserves of natural gas and whether or not the guy that's calculating knows what the hell he's talking about or whether there's conspiracy. I don't know anything about that. So I try to stay away from that kind of talk. Yeah, well, right now we're being jobbed at the gas pump. We're being jobbed by Exxon. And the thing is, how do we legally go about holding them responsible? Because they've got the lawyers, they got the power, and they go into court. No, sir, 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 again, I'm going I'm to tell you one more time that it really annoys me when you guys don't catch on to this. They have zero in the way of power next to you. The only difference, sir, is they exercise the power they have. Right. And you apparently choose not to. That's an editorial view. That's the key. No, you did. You hit on the head back. You're absolutely right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 461. 9352 in Pinellas. We are down to one twinkling for Nortner Light. 
I do recall what you people said on Friday. I'm going to hold your little heels to the fire. I promise you I will. So I'll give those numbers again. 990-9352 in Hillsboro. 461-9352 in Pinellas. <clears throat> I would take the call that's on there, but then that, you know, like, wouldn't be twinkling, and it would make me feel very bad if there wasn't at least one twinkling for Norton or Light. And besides, Don Richards is standing by the WFLA news desk, and he always twinkles all through the program. Those of you who every Monday sit there and breathlessly wait to hear what the special will be at the Grand Prix Car Watch this week. It is not fair, but this week, I think you will really be very, very pleased with the special. This week, at the Grand Prix Car Wash, you will get 25% off any of the package car washes and a coupon, coupon as you will, for 25% off the next packaged wash. Now we're talking about the first class, the super, or the supreme. It's not just the supreme or just the super or just the first class. It's your choice. 25% off this time, 25% off the next time that you come by the Grand Prix car wash, and you will come back again. That I am confident of, you see, because the Grand Prix isn't going to let you get away unless you're happy. So there are locations, if you will. The newest, it's in South Tampa, 3622 Gandhi Boulevard. There's also one in Seminole at 10471 Park Boulevard and the original Gulf to Bay Boulevard, 1880 Gulf to Bay in Clearwater, the Grand Prix car wash. To the phones again, St. Petersburg. Hi there, St. You're on the air from 970 WFLA. Good afternoon, Bob. Afternoon, sir. I like your idea. Let's uh, find the big wigs, let's take the money, and let's fund fusion research to its logical conclusion. At this point, I think it's uh, better than synthetic fuels. It's it's certainly an inexhaustible supply of well, I don't know. I don't know who we were talking about fusion research. No, but... We were talking about, about alternate fuels. We weren't fuels. talking about. I know we weren't talking about alternate fuels. I, I, don't, I don't really know anything about them. And uh, I, I was talking about how it's the best way to handle this deal, you know, boycott or, or whatever. Well, I like your idea. Let's let's find the big wigs. Let's take the money and put it into research for clean fuel. Thank you very much. Off it is now to Palma Sia. Hi there, Palma. You're on the air. 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Uh, Hi. I, I caught your topic uh, first thing on your monologue, and it's the first time I've had a chance to give, talk to you about it. Uh, it's obvious to me people don't listen to what you're talking about. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's just you know, one of the things that goes along with it. Well, one, thing, the 43 cents. Yeah, one of the things I was... Uh, what about refusing a tax deduction? You know, they're going to write a lot of this off as a tax deduction. Well, you know, it, it is a legitimate cost of business. Uh, well, I understand that, but see, somebody's got to, why should I have to pay for their, their mistake? Well, you're, you're going to no matter what. You see, that's the problem, because it, suppose we refuse the tax deduction. Okay, so they'll jack the price up on something else. Well, that's true. That's, that's good. You know, so no matter how you want to deal with this, the only way I can conceive of, and I've given it a fair amount of thought, of really slapping down hard on the people who are genuinely responsible for this, really slapping the people who deserve to be slapped, is to just take away all their stock, take away all their ownership, interest, and fire them. That brings up another point I'd like to ask, and... Um I'm sure you've probably dabbled in a little bit of stock, but you realize that the people that do the major amount of investing in this country seem to be the insurance companies. And, uh, the insurance companies want to run Exxon if you know, Harvard University wants to...